Yo, sup geeks and welcome back. New doll repaint video today. I'll be customizing an LOL OMG doll. Also, this video is in collaboration with my friends Kiros Workshop, Jackie O, Black Space Dolls, Mr. Super Customs, Josephine Creatures, and I could do that DIY. We just decided the only rule for this collab would be to use an LOL OMG doll as base. So, there is plenty of doll videos this weekend, also, so much variety. More details at the end of this video, and the links to my friend's channel will be linked down below on the description box. And this is the design I came up with. I really wanted to make something cute, but at the same time, season related. You know, I love colorful things, and you'll see later that this was one of those times when I walk away from the original design. I kept the concept and some elements, but I changed a little bit for a more modern and sleek look. Also, if you have good eye for those things, you should have noticed that I got a new camera, yes. So video quality will be improving over here. So get used to these fancy blurry backgrounds, oh my gosh, I'm in love. And well, that said, let's move on to customize this curvy little babe. It was so sad to get rid of her hair cause it's so gorgeous, but you know, I'm here to customize and completely transform this doll. As usual, I'll be using 100% pure acetone to erase all the factory paint. And now that we have a clean canvas, I really want to try something new for me. I'm gonna use an airbrush to make a bold yellow eyeshadow. On dark complexion skin dolls, light pastels tend to completely disappear after sealing with MSC. This has frustrated me so much in the past, and this is something I really wanted to try. For that, I'm just using regular acrylic paint. And look at this, there is no way I could have achieved these colors without pastels. So now it's time for the main event, the face up. As you can see, I'm drawing inside the top part of her eyes to make them look smaller. I was so scared to start this repaint and I remember I shared that on Instagram, like I really don't get why they had to give these dolls so heavily molded eyes, like they re literally look like two burger buns on her face once you get rid of the factory paint. So I'm just gonna try to correct that and give her like a softer expressions, more anima-like, more kawaii girl. Also, yes, why molded on eyeliner? Like really? Is that really necessary? In the beginning, I was planning to sand the eyes down so I could draw my own, that or use a poxy sculpt to hide the molded on details, but in the very end, I just decided to embrace the challenge, you know, like, to accept it. And you know what? I'm glad I did it, because this repaint flowed beautifully, as you will see. Honestly, I think the spectrum of customizable dolls on the stores right now is really, really small. Not to say non-existent, I think the doll customizing community only survived thanks to the second-hand market. I really miss the good old days when all the doll section shelves were full of Monster High and Ever After High dolls. It was so exciting just to walk by and see all those color and beautiful faces. I mean, right now we have so few brands. We have Barbie, but it's time to face it, Barbie current state is really, it's really sad. The quality is so low, and like 95% of their dolls got stiff bodies and no articulation at all. Also, there is the fact that repainting Barbie is really so hard. Their faces and features are so tiny, not so much room to get creative while repainting them. We have Rainbow High, yes, the quality of these ones is so high. Honestly, hard to believe those are Playline dolls. It's really mind-blowing with all those fancy packagings and high-quality fashions, but I think what keeps most people away from customizing them is their inset eyes. Because not everyone is willing to work with UV resin and stuff to make inset eyes. Most of the time, artists just want to repaint. 
LOL OMG same situation, super high quality but their faces are not the best canvas to get creative. Let's hop with Monster High TV show, uh, going to Nickelodeon channel next year, yes we get a full reboot of this line so we can enjoy buying them from the shelves again. So getting back to the face up, as you can see I switched to acrylics. I want the colors of her face really saturated and sometimes that is not completely possible using the watercolor pencils, I mean it's not something completely necessary on our repaints but I think this one really requires some boost using acrylics, especially for the highlight areas. I'm also adding some more details like the little wrinkles on her lips and some more detailings on the irises. I'm gonna use some black soft pastels to create a shadow on the top part of her eyes. This step always makes the eyes more believable and dimensional, like they're really there. These eyes are so huge that you can really paint whatever you wanna paint inside them. They are like a huge canvas. For this girl, I chose two bright yellow stars and some crazy highlights. And as a final step, I'm gonna add some tiny white freckles, you know, to seal the cuteness. And now the repaint is done. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. For the outfit, I'm gonna use super light air dry clay, you know, my favorite material for doll accessories and armor. This clay, as you can see, it won't stick to anything but itself so it's perfect for removable outfits and armor. It's also known as silk clay, I think. Honestly, I feel like I've been sewing a lot lately and I wanted to relax a little bit with this one. So I'm going for this candy dress I designed it, but I want it to look more like actual candy, you know, volume, very very sculpted and very glossy. I'm working now on this melted candy area which I really love and I think it's like the center of attention so I'm taking my time. Once the skirt is done, you can easily see it's not even attached to the body. So now I will remove it to work on the bodies. Working with this clay is super easy, but at the same time it's kinda tricky. I have learned its language and how it behaves watching so many videos from anime figurine artists that use specifically this type of clay all the time. And you know, it's a good alternative especially for accessories and armor, and like in this case even for outfits. I'm making the little bow she has on her neck, cause I really want all the elements of her outfit to look like they are made out of candy.
I'm gonna use some epoxy sculpt and I'm going to mod her heels a little bit. I will just keep the shape in general but I will hide all the buckles they have on the front. And here they are. Very simple yet effective. So now we have her outfit completely molded and it looks so cute all in white but you know this will be candy and candy is colorful so let's move on to the paint job. I will be using regular acrylic paint applied in thin coats cause we don't want bulky paint and visible brush strokes. You know we really want the paint job to look like factory made and for that Thin coats is the way to go. It took me like 5 coats to get these perfect white stockings. Once the solid colors are dry, I'm gonna work on some highlight areas, you know, to give the illusion of more dimension and this will make the overall paint job to look way more vibrant and whimsical. She's looking so great, but this paint job needs shadows. And for that, I'm gonna take some soft pastels and I'll be blotching shadows effects here and there. You know, for some details to really pop up. All this highlight and shadows blushing work really makes a difference in every paint job. And now that the paint job of her outfit is done, she needs one more step, which is of course, gloss. I will be using Liquitex high gloss varnish to make this candy fantasy effect to really come to life. For this full effect, it took me like 3 layers. But oh my gosh, it looks so edible, just like actual candy. So this girl still bad, so I decided to reroute. For that, I'll be using this hot pink nylon hair I got. I know rerouting after the face up is a big no no, but these doll heads are really hard vinyl, so it won't be really a problem. I think. Now I have to repeat this like a million more times. And here she is. Luckily, the reroute went okay, but she's looking a little bit wild right now, so it's time for a boy wash. I want to make a style in a high ponytail, so she can have that little Ariana Grande moment. So I decided to add these cute earmuffs, so I chose to go with yellow. Why? I don't know. I just think it looked cute on her. The earmuffs are gonna be really simple, just some flexible wire for the base. I'm going to paint it in pink, and I'm just gonna glue the yellow pom-poms. And now we are done.
so here's the whole squad. They really look so different and cute at the same time. It's really hard to believe they basically are the same base doll. Each artist's style really shows on their respective creation. So enjoy your weekend by binge watching all this cute bunch of dolls and don't forget to show some love to Kiros Workshop, Jackie O, Blank Space Dolls, Mr. Super Customs, Josephine Creatures and I Could Do That DIY. So thank you so much for watching, if you got to hear, you're awesome. Wanna be more awesome? Don't forget to give a like, drop your comment, subscribe if you haven't yet and hit that bell button so you won't miss when I upload a new video. It's free and that really motivates me to keep creating more and better content. Well, see you on my next video, bye!